Muy buenas tardes, ministros, colaboradores. Good afternoon, ministers, fellow workers, and brothers and sisters present, and children as well. May Jesus Christ, our Savior, the angel of the covenant, bless you and me, and may he allow us to see his program on this occasion, and allow us to see the blessings he has for each of you and for me. In the eternal name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. God says, to the patriarch and prophet Abraham in chapter 15 verse 12 and on of Genesis and when the sun was going down a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo an hour of a great darkness fell upon him and he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. May God bless our souls with his word and allow us to understand it. You may be seated if you are so kind. The deliverance of Abraham's seed. The deliverance of of Abraham's seed the deliverance of Abraham's seed is promised in the scripture even when Abraham didn't have children yet we find that God speaks to Abraham about the son he would give him through his wife Sarah. But notice, Abraham did not have a son through his wife, Sarah, yet. Now, not only that, but Abraham, notice, Abraham did not have a son through Hagar yet either because Ishmael was born in chapter 16. Now, in chapter 15, before Abraham has children yet, God is already telling him that his seed will be in bondage, but that God will deliver his seed. And now we have Abraham's seed according to the flesh, which is the Hebrew people, which is the earthly seed. And we have Abraham's heavenly seed, which are the members of the church of Jesus Christ. And the son of Abraham is Jesus Christ. 
and through Jesus Christ comes that heavenly seed of Abraham through the new birth that Christ and therefore he operates the new birth and the person and when Christ operates the new birth by giving a person of his Holy Spirit and the person receiving the theophatic body of the sixth dimension that person was born again but first he has been born in the sixth dimension and at the last day he will obtain the physical and eternal body which is like being born but not of a woman but by divine creation it is the physical aspect in which we will dwell at this end time when the dead in Christ rise and we who are alive are changed and now we are not physically going to be born of a woman in an eternal body but by divine creation by that work of divine creation that Christ will carry out at the last day just as the new birth in the theophanic body of the sixth dimension has also been by divine creation and now we can see that since we come through Christ and the new birth we are Abraham's seed through Jesus Christ the son of Abraham just like through Isaac the Hebrew people are descendants of Isaac and therefore they are Abraham's seed according to the flesh and now for Abraham's seed or Abraham's descendants we have the promise of the deliverance and the deliverance for the Hebrew people as Abraham's seed according to the flesh and as a nation took place in Egypt by God using the prophet Moses through whom he took the Hebrew people out of Egypt he delivered them he brought that deliverance and then he established them as a nation with their own laws and he took them to the promised land and now we can see that even though God's descendants according to the flesh through Isaac are servants they are the people of the servants as a nation that is a daughter nation of God and that is the firstborn nation of God although is made up of the servants as a nation it is God's daughter nation God's firstborn nation Israel is my son even my firstborn God says and this is applicable to Israel or Jacob as an individual and as a nation that is as the Hebrew nation and now we can see that everything that happened in the life of Jacob and in the life of the Hebrew people is reflecting what would be happening with the heavenly Israel and with Jesus Christ Notice, I called my son out of Egypt, the scripture says. And this was fulfilled in the Hebrew people. We find that Jacob also lived in Egypt. But when he died, he was taken from Egypt to the land of Israel. And when the resurrection happened, when Christ rose, the saints of the Old Testament rose with him. Then rose Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, the patriarchs as well. All these saints of the Old Testament rose with Christ 
and they were delivered from death. And now, we also have the promise of a deliverance for the heavenly Israel. And by a person receiving Christ as a Savior and washing away his sins in the blood of Christ and receiving his Spirit, he has received a deliverance. And he has been taken to the promised land of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he has been born in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and thus he has been born in the sixth dimension. And notice, he has come into the sixth dimension also as a promised land by receiving the Holy Spirit, and that is receiving the birthright. And now, notice, that is the spirit of adoption. In order for people to be adopted at the last day and obtain the eternal body, first they must have received the spirit of adoption, believe in Christ as our Savior, wash away our sins in the blood of Christ, and receive His Holy Spirit. And this has been happening from stage to stage, from age to age, as Christ, through the messenger of each age, has been calling and gathering His elect, and the evidence that people have the Spirit is that they believe. They receive and believe the message of their age, of their time. And now, at the last day, we have the promise of a physical deliverance. We will be physically delivered. When we who are alive are changed and the dead in Christ are raised. But there is also a spiritual deliverance. Just as the Hebrew people were delivered back then, delivered from bondage in Egypt, God selected as individuals and also the Church of Jesus Christ as the mystical body of Christ would be delivered at this end time. And now, from age to age, the sons and daughters of God receive a deliverance, their deliverance. And then, at the end time, the sons and daughters of God receive the deliverance of the last day. On page 95 of the book An Exposition of the Seven Church Ages, Reverend William Branham says, And the church corporate has never learned this lesson from the scripture nor from history. Every time God gives a visitation of the Holy Spirit, meaning, an age opens when God sends his messenger with the message for that age and a revival comes, in other words, a spiritual awakening, and he calls and gathers his children in that age. He says, and people, notice, remember, every time God gives a visitation of the Holy Spirit, and how does he do it? Christ in Holy Spirit visits his church th through the angel messenger of each age and what happens and people get free after a while they bind themselves right back to the very thing they came out of when Luther came out of Catholicism the people stayed free for a while but when he died the people simply organized what they thought he believed and set up their own creeds and ideas and repudiated anyone who said opposite to what they said they went right back to Catholicism with a little different Form. And right today, many Lutherans are ready to go all the way back. In other words, they organized themselves, they made a denomination, and got into the denomination just as they had come out of a denomination and they were free for a while under the visitation of God and the messenger of their time. That was the visitation of the Holy Spirit. Then, when the messenger passes, then they all organize themselves 
They claro. make a denomination and they go back ahora, to being back into bondage. Vean cómo eso sucedido. And now notice how that has happened during the seven stages of the gentle church. Once each age has been fulfilled, then they organize themselves after the messenger passed and they went back to being in bondage. And after the seven ages of the gentle church, at this end time we have the promise of the visitation of God, the visitation of Jesus Christ, the visitation of the Holy Spirit for a deliverance. And notice, in the age of the cornerstone, which is the age pertaining to our time, just as there was a deliverance in each age when the messenger came and proclaimed that message, and an age was open, the people were completely free there with the messenger. But once the messenger finishes his ministry, people come and take everything they think the messenger believed, they organize it, they set up dogmas and creeds, and make their own denomination and then they go back into bondage and the place where they had been free the age where they had been free then becomes a place of bondage just like in Egypt where when Jacob entered with his sons, they were free and had God's blessing there while they had Joseph among them. But after Jacob died and the patriarchs died and Joseph died, then that place became a place of bondage for the Hebrews. But then God delivered them through the visitation, the visitation of God through the prophet Moses. Now notice, this same thing has happened from age to age. And then, in the age of the cornerstone, in the visitation of Christ and Holy Spirit, He delivers His people spiritually. He calls them and puts them in the age of the cornerstone where Christ and the Holy Spirit would be manifested and there we are free. There we have the spiritual freedom for all the sons and daughters of God. Outside of that age, there isn't freedom but bondage. And now, notice what Reverend William Brenham says in the message works is faith expressed pages 4 to 5 paragraph 24 and on says I had a dream the other morning we don't know which other morning it was whether it was the day before or on a morning meaning it was in the early morning he says, I don't dream very often. This was in 1965 on November 26, 1965, so one month before he passed. Around that date, Miguel was how old, Miguel? Uh, 34 years old he was a young man I was around 25 years old I was a young man as well how old was Benji back then about one or two years old Benji oh he still he wasn't uh, uh, well I was also young back then so was Miguel but I dreamed that I seen a man, a young fellow, in shackles. In other words, just like Peter was bound with shackles in prison, well, so was this young fellow. Remember that the place represents a place of bondage, like the Hebrew in Egypt, like Peter in prison, 
and like Paul in prison. God delivered the Hebrew people from bondage in Egypt. He delivered Peter from prison. The shackles broke. They fell off. They opened, and Peter went free. And Paul, when he was in prison, the doors opened, and everyone was free. Oh, the Paul didn't leave. Everyone was free there. And now, he says, he saw a young fellow in shackles. And he was trying to get out. And I said, somebody told me, said, those are horrible people. Don't have nothing to do with them. And I've seen this young fellow getting out of his shackles, so I just let him alone. In other words, he didn't tell him anything. He just left him alone to see what he would do. I thought, I'll just see what he does. So, when he got out, he was a nice fellow. And I've seen others trying to get out. And she said, Brother Branham, deliver us from this. Said, this is a house of hell. And said, you've been misunderstood. And said, these and you, you misunderstood these people too, said, these are fine people. But, and I looked over there, and like a great big cellar, or big walls, down beneath a great big cave, and great iron bars, eight or ten inches thick, and people out of their mind, twisted arms and legs beating their head like that and she was crying saying deliver the people brother Branham said, said help us we're in trouble she herself I know her she belongs to the uh, I believe the Church of Christ or the Christian church called Church of the Brethren. So she, I looked around and I said, I wish I could and go on looking around and my little bitty body and the great big iron bars and those poor people in there, and you couldn't get to them, the iron bars was set in close together. Meaning, they were close to each other. And I looked, and they were beating their head like they were out of their mind. And I seen some lights flickering around in there. And I looked up, and there stood the Lord Jesus with the lights of rainbow around him. He was looking right straight at me, he said. He said, deliver those people. And he went away. And I thought, well, how could I deliver them? I haven't got strength enough in my arms to break those bars. So I said, house of hell, give away to the name of Jesus Christ. And all the creaking and popping and rocks rolling, and bars falling, and people running, screaming, delivered, and screaming at the top of their voice, at the top of their lungs, and all was delivered. And I was screaming then, Brother Roy Borders, where are you? Where are you? God is delivering his people. Where are you, Brother Borders? God is what? Delivering, freeing his people. And now notice how he delivers his people from all 
that remains down here which was made organized and they organized everything they thought the messenger of each age believed but now God is delivering his people they're called and gathered together in the age of the cornerstone and there they are free and now notice every time God sends a messenger in each age and there is that manifestation of the Spirit of God people are set free and now we only have one place where people can be delivered set free and it is the age of the cornerstone because the rest of the ages already passed and then they became a place of slavery after the messenger of each age passed and now we can see how God is spiritually delivering his people and God will continue to carry out his work and he will even deliver us physically when we're changed we will be delivered from the mortal, corruptible, and temporary, and we will have physical, eternal life as well. Well, we have seen the deliverance of Abraham's seed, which has been going through the different stages or ages, and we have seen the deliverance of his seed in each age, but now, in the age of the cornerstone this is a place for that deliverance and just as there was a territory in each age there's also a territory and which one is it Latin America and the Caribbean now we can see where we are in the divine program and now we can better understand that dream our brother Branham had we can see that it's about a deliverance for God's elect of this end time. And that deliverance has begun and it will continue until we are also physically delivered. With the transformation, we will receive the total deliverance. And the dead in Christ will receive it with the resurrection in eternal bodies. And let's leave that alone because we can't cause too much of a stir. As we say, instead, we should let God continue to work the way he is working. Notice, God is sending his blessings and we are being invited by evangelical and Pentecostal congregations in different countries in different churches and they are very happy God is working with them and God knows what he is doing he is giving us grace before everyone and what did the head of a group of a number of churches and older man say Miguel will tell you once he has read the messages that's over in Argentina Miguel will tell you how God is working and if we were to go to all the evangelical and Pentecostal churches that want us to be with them we would not have time to be with you But Miguel is preparing services where he can gather a group of congregations in one place and that way we're with them and also with our brethren 
who are in those territories because we all gathered there and the message is given and God is also allowing people from the different churches to understand. Now, no one interrupt what God is doing. Let God be the one who works. Don't go and try to preach and start saying things that which they can stumble over because then you're responsible for an interruption of the deliverance that God is carrying out and it will be a blessing upon you but a judgment. So give out the booklets and the videos. There are churches that are receiving the booklets and also the videos and passing them along to their congregations and even giving out the booklets. Miguel will explain to you how they're doing in different places. And, well, God is allowing them to understand. Therefore, it is not a human work, but a work of Christ. So, we want God to continue working. We do not want to interrupt what He is doing, but instead be His fellow workers at this end time. Sometimes, some people interrupt instead of helping. There are people we wouldn't want to help us because instead what they do is a disservice. And it's better to be good fellow workers and not say anything people can stumble over. In other places, I can't speak the way I'm speaking here with you because some people may stumble. But among you, since you already know the message of Brother Branham, you do not stumble because you understand about all these things our Brother Branham was saying. Well, the things that were prophesied in the Old Testament and the New Testament and by Brother Branham that God would do at this in time is what God must be doing. And he is already doing, fulfilling many of those prophecies. Well, we are the beneficiaries of all those blessings that have been promised for the Church of Jesus Christ at this last day or end time. So let's enjoy those blessings and be good fellow workers in the work of Christ. The blessing of Christ is with us. It's in His Church in the Age of the Cornerstone. And everything we do, you can see that it prospers. That is where the blessing of God, the blessing of Christ is. And it is the only age He can bless because the other ages have already ended. And the time of redemption for other ages and for the territories where other ages were already ended. But now we have the blessing in Latin America and the Caribbean with the seven colors of the rainbow. And let leave all of that alone. Notice that in the deliverance and for the deliverance, Elijah saw Jesus Christ with the colors of the rainbow. And Elijah was the one that Christ told to deliver the people. He didn't have physical strength and it seemed to him that his body was very little, but he spoke the word by the creative word being spoken. 
That deliverance comes not by might, nor by power either, nor by sword, but by my spirit, said the Lord. In Zechariah chapter 4, it's through the Spirit of God in His manifestation in each age comes the victory for the elect of each age. And that is how it is for our age, by the creative word being spoken. As God said to Moses when Moses cried to God, while facing the situation they had there, the Red Sea before them and behind them, the Egyptian army. In other words, they were between a rock and a hard place. And he cried to God, and God tells him, Why do you cry to me? Speak! Tell the people to go forward. He stretched forth his rod and spoke the word. And the rod represents the creative word of God. And now notice how he spoke the word and everything happened in favor of the Hebrew people. Moses had already said, these Egyptians you see, you will see them again no more. But then he started to pray to God, to cry to God, and God said to him, why do you cry to me? Speak! A type and figure of an adopted prophet. Well, let's leave all of that alone. We already know where we stand, which age we're in. We know that God is delivering his people. He is delivering them spiritually first, and then he will deliver us physically by giving us the new body. May the blessings of Christ, the angel of the covenant, be upon all of you and also upon me, and soon may we all be adopted, may we all be changed. In the eternal name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, amen, amen. Well, I leave Miguel Bermuda's Marine with us again. I uh, will tell you, in a few words, we only have a little time left, but in a few words, how they're asking for the messages in booklets and in videos over there and how everything is going in all the countries because God is working at this end time. Well, with us now, our friend and brother, Miguel Bermudez Marin. Did you see how in the time when Brother Branham was speaking there, Miguel and I were young men? And now, like Joshua and Caleb, we say, Joshua and Caleb, when they were going to enter the promised land, they were, Joshua was about 80 or 80 something, and Caleb was a little older, right? A little older. They were the only two that were left of those who came out of Egypt. In other words, they were the two oldest ones among the Hebrew people. But, What did Caleb say? That he still felt young and strong to go in and possess it at 85 years old and conquer it. At 85 years old, he said he felt the same vigor, the same strength as he did when he had gone into the promised land with Joshua when they were sent as spies. In other words, when they were about 40 years old, he was strong. And now when he's 85 years old, he says, I'm as strong as when I was 40 years old. And he asked Joshua for permission, knowing that Joshua was then the messenger after Moses. He asked him for permission. Let me go conquer what Moses gave me. Mount what? Mount Hebron. Let me go conquer my inheritance, what belongs to me.
And do you know what were there? Giants. The giants I had seen were there. And now Caleb says, let me go conquer what's mine. It's full of giants. But those who were afraid of the giants are the ones who died in the wilderness. So let me conquer what belongs to me. And Joshua tells him, he told him, go. He sent him with the divine blessing. He went and conquered that territory. And that is the territory. It belongs to what? To what tribe? To the tribe of Judah. Because Caleb is from the tribe of Judah. And Joshua is from what tribe? From the tribe of Ephraim, which is the tribe of the birthright blessing. With a descendant of Ephraim, a descendant of the tribe that has a birthright blessing, the people went into the promised land. And a descendant of the tribe of Ephraim was the one that had the name of redemption, the name Joshua, which means Savior or Redeemer. He had the same name that the Messiah would also have in his coming. Well, let's leave it there. We're already getting into names. And if we keep getting into the topic of names, there is so much to talk about that look at everything I would have to show you here. We can't show it there because... So I have that... Uh, there but there will be a moment for it or if not it's just for me <laughs> then it's just for me meanwhile I continue to enjoy it there every time I see it <laughs> what is written there is the same thing I spoke to you about in Fusagasuga some years ago in one of those ministers meetings where I spoke to you about the eternal name of God that it had two H's two H's that they are silent letters and so on what's written there is about that and I've left this alone this was written a short time ago I don't know if it was when I traveled or if I already had it written in Puerto Rico but I have that there because it's good for me to have it there and every time it refreshes my memory and in some messages you will find about these things and in some of the messages from the tour it has already some things have already been discussed as well so all of God's mysteries are open the ones that were not open in past ages or by past messengers and the ones that were not opened by Reverend William Branham are open at this time in our age and our dispensation and the greatest mystery which everyone expected Reverend William Branham to open because he was speaking about how he would be preaching on the seven seals and he was very enthusiastic but when he got to the seventh seal the angel did not want to open the mystery to him therefore he only spoke about that mystery and prophesied and said that mystery would be open later on. In other words, that the angel of the covenant would come and open that mystery later on. It was not open at that time. Therefore, it's for our age, the age of the cornerstone, and for our dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom. And the mystery of each dispensation is the mystery of God's manifestation through the dispensational messenger. Well, let's leave that alone because there's nowhere to stop. So, let's 
leave all of it alone so that you can prepare everything for tonight's service. What is tonight's subject, Miguel? Today is the 12th, right? It's God's mercy extended. Es Romans 9.14. That is a very good subject. God's mercy extended. The mercy of God extended. In other words, he is still extending his mercy. There in Romans 9.14 to 18, how he extends his mercy. And that goes along with Isaiah. Was it, Miguel? That we spoke about that God defers. Was it 48.9? Yes, Isaiah 48.9 defers judgment. And it's by his mercy that he defers it out of love, out of love that he, for the redeemed, that he defers, meaning he delays the judgment. He postpones it. He postpones it. That is why back then, when he passed in front of Moses in that manifestation, it was, Lord, Lord, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. And Moses was covered by the hand of God like this in a cleft of the rock. And the voice was, Lord, Lord, plenteous in mercy and slow to anger. And even Jonah, speaking of, but I know that you're merciful, and if they repent, you will forgive them, and you will not destroy them. Well, that was what God wanted, to forgive them. That is God's desire. St. Paul says in other passages that this is God's desire that all should come to repentance. For what? So that they do not perish, but receive everlasting life. Because he does not delight in the death of the wicked, rather he delights in the righteous when they repent, and he gives them life. That is what Jesus spoke to his disciples about when he said that when a sinner repents, there is joy in heaven. The angels and everyone rejoices. And in the parable of the prodigal son, when there was joy in the house of the father of that child, of that son who repented, there was joy in his father's heart. And that's how it is with God. There's joy in heaven when a sinner repents. Well, let's leave everything at that. Let's leave Miguel here. May God bless you. May God keep you and with us, Miguel.